that satisfies this um, homogeneous system. So we go ahead and find the agent vector that corresponds to this uh, this complex agent value case. So we've dealt with something like this in the last video. But in this time around, we have a mixture. So let's see how we do it, something like that. Now, for the next case, that is for um, for lambda for lambda one two equals one plus or minus two i. So we said from here we have we have two values for lambda. So let's make our lambda one to be the one that has a positive imaginary value. So lambda one equals this. So we said the next thing we want to do is we want to find an agent vector that corresponds to lambda one. So but then this is something as if you compare it with alpha plus i beta. So we have our alpha to be one and our two to be this. So this one implies that alpha equals one and beta equals beta equals two. Anyway, let's go ahead and find the agent vector that corresponds to lambda lambda one. So to find that, all we need to do is we need to solve a minus lambda i x equals zero. Now on solving that, that is, so for lambda equals, we are using this lambda here, so we want to solve 1 minus 2i, we have 1, 2, then 3, negative 1 minus 2i, we have 6, negative 4, 0, negative 4 minus 2, minus 2i. This is what, this is what we have, then x, y, z equals um, equals zero. Then we said to solve the system like this, all we need to do is we need to reduce, we will reduce this um, this coefficient matrix here. And then on reducing the coefficient matrix, what we obtain is one, zero, one plus i all over two. So we have zero, one, three i all over two. We have zero, zero, zero. So we have x, y, z equals zero, zero, zero. So this is exactly uh, what we obtain. So when we write this in equation form, so we have one times x, that is x, this times this, which is one plus i all over two times z equals zero. The next one is one times y which is y, then 3i over 2 times this, that is plus 3i over 2 times z equals z. Either which ways, we still have z as a free as a free variable. So since z is a free variable, I'm going to go ahead by setting my z to be 1. So if my z is 1, my uh, my y, which is gotten from bringing it here, is going to be negative 3i over 2. And then my x is also minus 1 minus i all over 2. So having in my x, y, and z, then that implies that my k1, my k1 is going to be minus 1 minus i all over 2 minus, that's my y now, minus 3i all over 2, and my z, which is 1. So we said the next thing is that I want to write, want to factorize this, that is, split it so that we can distinctly differentiate the real part from the imaginary part. In other words, each of the entry, write them in terms of the real part and the imaginary part, each entry. So this has already been written for us, negative one minus i over two. The next one is zero plus minus three over two i. And the other one is one plus zero 1 plus 0 i. So I'm going to write this as this is negative 1. So maybe I should use this is negative 1, this is 0, this is 1. And the imaginary part is uh, minus i all over 2, minus 3 all over 2 i, and this is 0 i. Either which way, let's, let's continue. So we have negative 1, 0, 1. Then plus, so this is minus 1 over 2, and this is negative 3 over 2, and the last one is 0. 
zero i. So having gotten this, we said the next step we do is we find b1 and b2. So we say let b1 be the real part of k1. Now the real part of k1 is one that does not have any i attached to it. So which is a negative one zero one. And we said b2 is a term that doesn't have an one of the terms of k1 that doesn't have, I mean, that has an i, or let me just say the equation of the imaginary number, which is negative 1 over 2, negative 3 over 2, and then this is a, this is 0. So having gotten this, you recall, which I'm going to write again, that the general solution is just x equals c1 e to the power alpha t into so this is b1 cosine of beta t minus b2 sine of beta t plus c2 into e to the power alpha t into b so this time around b2 is starting cosine of beta t and then we said the sign here changes to positive b1 sine sine of beta t so this is what we know. So let's now write our final solution. So our x, and then you observe we have c1, this is my x1, and then c2, this is my this is my x2. So what I have here from here to here is my x1, or from here to here is my x. You can just see it's just a linear combination of this that we have here. So anyway, my so let me just say, since I already know this, let me just say my x1, my x1 is e to the power alpha t, and it's e to the power alpha t. My alpha is, um, yeah, this is my alpha here. My alpha is 1, my beta is 2. So let me go ahead. So this is e to the power alpha t. That is um, what, what I got there was e to the power t into... We have our b1, this is our b1 here, which is negative 1, 0, 1. Then cosine of our beta t, so we got our beta above to be 2t, our beta is 2, minus, this is our b2 here, that is negative half, negative 3 over 2, 0, sine of 2t, plus Okay, that, that's that's all for x1. And then for x2, let me just write my x2 here. I'm going to remove it here. x2 is e to the power t, alpha is 1, into r b2, which is negative half, negative 3 over 2, 0, then cosine of beta t, that's cosine of 2t, plus b1, this is our b1 here negative 1, 0, 1, then sine, sine 2t. This is what we have. So now I have my x1. Well, let, me, let me just call this, I could just call this, since I already have, I've already, I've, I've obtained x3 above. So now I have my x1, I have my x2, and I have my, my x3. Where is my x3 here? Okay, now I have my, my x3, which is also shown here. So we said the general solution should be of the form C1x1 plus C2x2 plus C3x3. So therefore, so I'm going to use this now lower, lower part. So therefore the general solution, the general solution is going to be x, which is equal to C1x1 plus C2x2 plus C3x3, and that is C1 times my my uh, what's near my x1 which i obtained i obtained above which i have to go back and check okay this is this this is my x1 here so i don't need to go and check that anyway so that is e to the power t into negative one times cosine of two t that's negative cosine of two t then negative negative that's half times sine of two t then zero times this is zero Negative, negative, that is 3 all over 2 times sine of 2t. 
1 times this is cosine of 2t this is 0 so this one closes there then plus c2 this is x2 so my x2 is this so that is e to the power t into negative half times cosine of 2t is negative half cosine of 2t plus negative 1 times sine 2t that is negative sine 2t then negative 3 over 2 times that that is negative 3 over 2 cosine of 2t plus 0 times that then 0 times this is 0 then plus 1 times that times sine 2t that is sine sine 2t so this is for c2 then lastly plus plus c3 c3 x3 c3 x3 i'm almost forgetting that x3 oh uh, i need to go and check that this is my x3 here 0 negative 2 1 e negative 3 t 0 negative 2 1 e negative 3 t 0 negative 2 1 e negative 3 t and this gives us the general solution of of the problem that completes the solution